All right, welcome everyone. I'm so excited. We have a very special guest today who has been on our podcast before, Dr. Pamela Gibbs. If you listen all the way back to season two, episode 26, you will find her there, but from a different role. So if you remember, she is from Maryland. Maryland. But- That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Maryland. But now... Um, she's moved all the way to Austin, Texas, where she is a researcher at an undisclosed crypto company. And I cannot say more. And you'll learn more about that in a few minutes. Um, Dr. Gibbs has all the degrees, in case you're wondering. She's got a Bachelor's of Science in Marketing from Penn State University, as well as an international business. And she has an MBA from Penn State. And her PhD is in information and interaction design from the University of Baltimore. Dr. Gibbs does all the things like a lot of us. She (laughs) wears many, many hats as a wife, a mom of two human babies and a dog baby. She is a computer scientist, a maker of good trouble, a lover of all things Beyonce, a member of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated, and... One day we'll rule the world as a future venture venture capitalist slash angel investor. So y'all keep watching. Um, She's going to shoot all the shots in case y'all didn't know. And that's probably how she ended up in her current role. And I know we'll find out more pretty soon. Some other things that you might want to know about is that she is a board member for Anita Borg. And she is um, a board member for Host for Humanity. She's worked in multiple industries, including in banking, government, retail, big tech, fintech, all the things. So Dr. Gibbs, welcome back, Pam. I'm so excited we get to talk to you again and about crypto. (laughs) Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be back. Yay. Yay. I'm yeah. excited you're back. Me too. You're on a short list of people who've been on here twice. So, you know, and you're in good company, like, Jamaica Birch. There's two, there's two people. People. I told you it's a short list. It's two people on it. I feel very honored. <laughs> very, very honored. She uh, is incredible within her own right. So I'm telling I'm you. glad that you are both incredible humans because it's real. Um, Here's the thing. When Kyla pitched having you back on, I was like, why? Why are we doing this? We had a very long, detailed, beautiful conversation with Dr. Gibbs. Um, do we need to do this again? She's like, Jeremy, crypto. I was like, what does that have to do with Pam? Um, and so she told me that you've switched roles and you can't talk about it. And, she can't talk about can her talk company. About it. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. So I was intrigued and I'm very, very, very excited to have our listeners learn more about this space, which is exploding. Yeah. Right yeah. Now. Um, yeah. Kind of halted a little bit, but still like moving forward and kind of, I think going to change the world. And that's what you say you do, right? Like, let me go back to this bio over here. Let me see. Uh huh. <laughs> she says she's yeah. changing the world. I'm just saying. Cause <laughs> that's what trying Cause to like we, try. The last time we saw each other was at um, CRA. I think it was grad cohort for women. And we had yep. a good time. A good old time. Yeah. We went to trap karaoke. It was a great time. Trap karaoke. <laughs> <What>? Absolutely. <laughs> In uh, New Orleans. It was, we had a time. Uh, but we definitely, man, when Pamela told me all of the stuff with, I was like, I have all the questions. Wait, people, other people probably have all the questions too. So I'm super, super excited. We have a million, umpteen, 511, all these units of black measurement numbers of questions for you. So yeah, let's get it. All right. So, okay. Oh, you go ahead. Okay. I was going to say for (laughs) basically, um, just kind of tying in from the last episode because the last time we spoke to you, you know, you were on one trajectory. So like, can you tell us like what led you to this crypto role? Like, were Mm -hmm. you already interested in it? you know, like, yeah. How did, how did we get here? I have been dabbling in crypto since like 2015 ish, 2016. Um, yeah. And it was something really fascinating to me. I really liked the application of taking a currency and making it digital. 
-hmm. And I kept hearing about this thing called Bitcoin. And I was like, yo, what is this? (laughs) Um, And then I fell into the rabbit hole. This is typically an experience that people, when they start getting into crypto, that's what they do. They just, the YouTube, you're up till 3, 4 a.m. in the morning and you're like, what did I watch? And the conspiracy theories, What's it's that? amazing. Oh, wow. All of the things, right? Mm-hmm. And then you hear about the nefarious actors and like, you know, all the things that are happening from that standpoint. And so I found it to be just really fascinating. And I have been dabbling um, in this space for quite some time. And my painful story is that I had two Bitcoin and I sold it. Yeah. Mm. Let's not talk about it. Let's not talk about it. I had I had a couple of different things, which I don't, this is not investment advice, but I had a couple of different um, cryptocurrencies. And again, I was just learning. And there's this famous quote from Nelson Mandela, I either win or I, or I learn, right? And in my case, hmm, I learned. I so. learned. And so did <laughs> yeah. your wallet. So yeah. yeah. It did. It did. But I fell in love with it. And so... Um, When the opportunity came, I was at a crossroads of like, do I stay where I am? Because I was recently at Walmart and then I made the transition to Google. Um, And anybody that, yeah, anybody that works at Google, it, they make it very hard for you to leave. They're an incredible company. I mean, I've worked for a lot of companies and my God, Google was number one. Um. And But this opportunity came and I remember going in and having the conversation with my boss and telling her, please do not counter. I have to make this decision. I have to go. And she said, are you sure? And I had to sit and still myself and say yes. Wow. That's serious. Yeah. That is Mm. serious. Okay. So what type of role were you in at Google? Before you research. Okay. Research. So I never switched in terms of like my role has just gotten expanded. Mm-hmm. Um, because again, I'm nosy for a living. I've been nosy <laughs> since I, I was that. a child. Research you know what I'm saying? Nosy for a living. I, at, listen, I love getting Can in people's business. And so <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, why not? Just I, I do it to t- her. Yes. I do two things very well. I'm nosy and I am very good at telling you your baby is ugly. Oh. Oh. Now, before you come for me, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. That is my job in essence, oh, right? Oh, Lord. Help I, us. I'm serious. As a researcher for these companies, my goal is to find out what are the issues that users have with the products and services, right? Because if I tell you the baby is ugly, then you can fix it. But if a customer tells you the baby is ugly, it's too late. then they go- they're gone. Yeah. It's too late, you know? And so I have that job, which can be very interesting at times because who wants to tell people that their baby is ugly? You know yeah. what I'm saying? People, so, yeah. It's kind of like how your family, you know, they, they break it down a little yeah. bit before you get out the oh, house. Man. Kind of that same. They tell you about Except yourself, it's not you your know? Family. It's yeah. like a, it's not. a third party that you don't necessarily know or respect. But I do it with love. Okay. Love. Yes. <laughs> and tenderness. <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna survive this. Me, this, this, this. I don't know. I might need some coffee or something. I'm gonna laugh too much. Um, Pam. Okay, I, I'll just say this as someone who is crypto adjacent. So, like, I am mm-hmm. aware that it's a thing. <laughs> I am risk averse, mm-hmm. and I've seen people. You know, their trajectories in life have fully changed because they've, by happenstance, figured something out or they've just been studious and like, like you said, up at three in the morning on a discord, like just listening. (laughs) And there's some investors saying blah, blah, blah. And we're going to launch this and we're going to drop that. And our people are in the whatever working right now and get ready and a tweet's going to come out and it's going to blow up and you know, all this stuff. So anyways, what do we need to know about crypto? And I guess the first question really to start that is what is the blockchain? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So 
the blockchain, I've been trying to figure out what's the easiest way that I can explain this. Mm -hmm. It is a ledger that anyone who participates in it can see. So think of an Excel spreadsheet Mm -hmm. or a Google Sheets, right? Where you put in information. And if you are a part of an organization, um, you have access to that information. Mm -hmm. That is the simplest way to explain it. Um, The blockchain... Another example I could think of is think of Apple, okay? They have these devices, Mm -hmm. right? A bunch of them. And then they've built a software called iOS, right? And on this software, people can build things on top of them and create companies, right? Mm -hmm. And so in essence, that is similar to this blockchain. It is something that things can be built on top of to create stores of value to create, you know, um, identification, um, verification, all of these different things. A blockchain um, consists of three pieces. It consists of the information that it's supposed to store in there. Mm -hmm. Then it's consisting of a hash. A hash code is kind of like a fingerprint, right? And then it consists of another hash, which is from a previous block. So, it, though it sounds complex, if you think about some of the everyday things that you have, again, like the iOS system, which is an infrastructure, mm-hmm. and then things are built on top of it, that is what I would say equate a blockchain to. Hmm. So digital infrastructure. Digital that, infrastructure. That maintains information that has yes. meaning or value to someone. And it is decentralized, so people have access to it as long as you're a part of this particular ecosystem. Um, And then if you are um, a coin, Mm -hmm. like a Bitcoin, Mm -hmm. right, that is built from, it is built from ground up. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, there are very few technologies like a Bitcoin and Ethereum, which things can be built on top of. So again, it is it is a way for this new, I guess, technology is what I would say, to have an infrastructure. Okay. Mm-hmm. Quick question. Yeah. So when you, as you were describing this, which is probably the most extensive explanation of her, it reminds me of just like a linked list in you know in data structures where you have like this head node and it's like okay you only have access to the head if you're part of this organization and then each or sorry a double linked list where you have access to the previous one that came before you your actual data and like your hash code like it's some sort of like is it like a linear structure I would say it's very similar from my from my opinion. Okay. Now everybody has their own interpretation, mm-hmm. but but yes. Okay. And the thing is, the reason why it's so powerful is because it is decentralized. Mm-hmm. So when you talk about for example cryptocurrencies, right? If you think about how currency is now established, in order for you to get your money, it comes from a central authority, like a central bank, right? And if you go and like pull out your dollar, it has a serial code on it, Mm -hmm. right? Which tells you that the central bank um, created this, this is the identifier that identifies that this is an actual dollar or whatever denomination it is, right? Whereas with cryptocurrencies, that's no longer the thing. Mm. It is digital. Mm-hmm. Um, and so therefore, as as you continue to like put out coins or put out any type of technology on that, it is verifiable with different identifiers that makes it very difficult to um, kind of tamper with, mm-hmm. unlike traditional currencies. Okay. So, so you've mentioned currency like as an as a technology that links to the blockchain. Absolutely. What other technologies exist that are like blockchain technologies that you know of? Um, there, so Walmart, okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they actually were, are working on a way for you to verify like produce. Mm. So for example, when you think about um, something that happens with the fruit, 
right? Or the the meat that we have, the poultry, anything that happens, a virus, um, bacteria, anything. And then it gets out to the public and then it becomes an issue, a health scare, because now food is contaminated and it's in the hands of the public. They can actually verify where this contamination occurred Mm -hmm. and be able to target it much quicker than before. And all of this stuff is digital. Right. And so therefore it right, it reduces the the middlemen that are in between all of the different stages. Like if you think about how many people and layers yeah. that you have to get through to figure out if something was contaminated. Yeah. yeah. You know? And so that's that's one application. Another application could be to verify luxury goods. Mm. So you think about counterfeits that are becoming a huge industry oh, yeah. in the secondary gray market, right? And how do you determine if something is actually a real item that you're purchasing or not? There's a way for you to stamp those um, luxury goods and verify that it actually is what it says it is. And that also leads into um, IDs, because that's another thing, you know, I've kind of hopped around across the United States and imagine going to the, the motor vehicle department and trying to get your license and your IDs updated. Like you have to take a day off work. Like you have to figure out like all these different things. You have to get all this documentation together. It's just, it's not a pleasant experience. And so you can leverage technologies on the blockchain to help with making IDs better and easier. And even in other cases, such as um, you think of medical records, again, because I've moved around a lot, being a parent and trying to get all of those medical records from one state to the oh other, it's just, it's a pain. It's a pain. Not even moving around. If you want to switch, even if you want to switch, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it's a pain. So imagine if you um, had the ability to give access to specific people you know, Mm -hmm. at the time that it's necessary. And blockchain technology can um, allow for that. So there are a lot of different use cases. I mean, even voting. So there there are some companies that are working on that because like currently, you know, paper voting is is not environmentally sound, right? We, We have a lot of issues with climate change and we're trying to combat that. And then even digital voting, the hacking that can occur. And so this is another way um, or another technology use case for the blockchain. So I've, I've, I've given you like, no, this is good. Yeah, like <laughs> anything where you need to verify where it came from and that it is true. Absolutely. I like that. I like yes. That. Okay. So okay. then we get into, we talked about how cryptocurrency is built on top of the blockchain. So there, you know, we've heard the terminology like Bitcoin mining, like what is that like what does it mean to because you think of a miner with a pickaxe and a shovel and they're doing like (laughs) what exactly is mining a bitcoin so because these are equations literally mathematical equations numbers that are going through all these different transactions like at a speed that's insane you need someone to verify and you have millions of millions of people on these um blockchains. And in order for it to say that, okay, you do have, like, let's say you bought a Bitcoin, somebody has to verify that and make sure that there are no um, incorrect or discrepancies rather um, going through the system. And that's what it is. You're, You're verifying that this is true. And as a result of you doing that job, you get a piece of the pie, which is Bitcoin. Okay, so Does that make sense? The Bitcoin, you have to mine it and have some of, you have to put in the work to verify that. It's, Absolutely. Uh, how long does... Now, you don't necessarily have to do that. Some people mm-hmm. do. Some people want to do that as an added way of earning as opposed to buying Yeah, I was going to say, Bitcoin. I could just turn this computer yeah. on and hit enter and walk away and get a Bitcoin. <laughs> is, that, is that what we can do? <laughs> well, so, so just like, you can- like my out of... <laughs> Uh, out of like some randomness that I have slightly learned about is like you know you have these like antenna that you can put up in your home that would connect you to other people 
and it further distributes like the network of information and like how it can easily pass through systems to get to someone who's doing the actual mining. Yeah. And so like being a part of that network gets you a piece of the pie too. My so neighbor if does you're that. Not the person, <laughs> yeah. If you're not the person who's actually sitting at the computer mining it. Yeah. You can help with the you've infrastructure made, for the mining. Yeah. And... You've made the infrastructure. Absolutely. Really? There's always ways. I mean, there, it's kind of like people will always find a new way mm -hmm. to earn something. And this is just another example of it. So, you know, when you think of mining, like you said, with the ax and, you know, the coal and like you have to get through these spaces that don't have a lot of air and it's, it's very dangerous. Now it's just changed. Right. And now we're going from, OK, I'm doing it in a space that maybe not it, it was quite hazardous mm -hmm. um, generally to a space that I'm in a, in a room and I'm verifying transactions and they have to go through certain protocols. However, at the end of the day, I get a piece of the pie, so to speak. Cool. Mm. How does somebody get into the mining of the of Bitcoin? Anybody can. That's the beauty of uh, Bitcoin. You, it depends on how like, <laughs> I have some friends who have like whole rigs. I mean, like rooms as large as a garage set up and they have all these different servers and all of these different things that are happening in that room. And it's like, you are not allowed in that room. Like I have wow. some people that take it that far. And then there are others that are like, I just have this little server that's running on my, you know, additional computer and it's, it's mining for me. So it really depends. And that's, again, the beauty of this is it's decentralized. So anybody can be a part of it. Um, and you can create your own, I guess, your own environment, like your own reality. It, to be honest, uh, depending on how much you want to put into it or how little you want to put into it. Okay. So I think we've covered the basics yes. of crypto, blockchain, you know, mining. I think that went a little more deep than I think we needed to necessarily. I was particularly <laughs> interested. Um, <laughs> I hope that answered your questions, Kyla. It did. It did. On a very <laughs> surface yeah, level. it did, but very I'm going follow surface. up by setting out this server, so. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, but you're a researcher. So, yes. you know, when, when I heard that you moved into crypto, I was like, what is she doing over there? Like, is she hacking some stuff? Is she... <laughs> building the I systems? do bad things is, is she doing the back end are you like what can you tell us mm -hmm. that someone who's a researcher in crypto would do I do bad things for a living don't do what I do <laughs> I'm kidding kidding <laughs> jokes it's all jokes um so for me again my job as a user researcher my goal is to understand the needs of people that use the products and services that we create and so at the end of the day regardless of whatever company that i'm working for that is my main focus mm -hmm. i again and when i say i tell people their baby is ugly i do that on a regular basis and it sounds funny when you hear it but if you think about you have a product let's mm -hmm. let's even take it outside of crypto you have a product like um airbnb which is one of my favorite products right and you know, you have an issue, you're, you're trying to use it in a certain way and it's not working and it doesn't make sense why it doesn't work the way it, it's supposed to. Mm -hmm. You have someone like me that goes in and figures out what is it that you're expecting? What are your pain points? What are the motivations that drive you to behave in this certain way? What are your aspirations? What, what are your future goals? Yeah. And then I translate that into requirements that ultimately become a part of the product and services that we offer. Mm -hmm. So regardless of whatever company I'm working for, um, that is the core at what I do. Um, and it just so happens that I am in the crypto space. Okay. So you're still doing like user experience research. It's just absolutely applied in this new area. That's like, absolutely. So I know like with, you know, listening to all of these random things and, you know, reading about crypto and stuff, a lot of them operate by using like other services. Like if you want to learn about if it's a cryptocurrency, for example, you, 
there are different applications, there's different ways that you can access certain coins. So some of them aren't on the blockchain, right? Some are and some are centralized and you can pay for a service to help you navigate the space. But the ones that are decentralized, like how do you even find out about them? You know, how does someone know that it's a thing? I know there's like you know, Twitter and um, like I mentioned, Discord. I know some of them have Facebook groups and you can watch them on YouTube, but like you don't know which is legit and what is not. Yeah. That is honestly what I have found um, as the way in. Like there are these niche groups that are um, focused on a particular X, Y, Z, right? And you are able to become a part of these groups and then build relationships. Mm -hmm. um, and I take it as any other type of investment, right? If you were to invest in real estate, you would do your due diligence. Right. You would take your time. You wouldn't just jump in and with the thought that you're going to make a lot of money. If you were to invest in stocks, <laughs> no. be right. because you're not, right? Risky. If you were to... It's incredibly risky. And so, especially with cryptocurrency, because it is highly volatile. Um, mm -hmm. And so, yes, you have to do your due diligence. And like you said, there are groups, Reddit, subreddits, yeah. into deeper subreddits, mm -hmm. um, uh, YouTube channels, and you do have to vet just like anything else. Um, I. It's interesting to me that people... When it comes to cryptocurrency, like conventional knowledge just goes out the window. Because yes. they just right? see dollar signs. Like you see dollar signs and you forget like if you're going to invest in a stock, you have to do your due diligence. Because if that if that doesn't provide, like the company doesn't provide a utility that is actually something that you can use in the real world. If they don't have um, evidence. Mm -hmm. What is utility? <laughs> they they don't provide a use case. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like so like an Airbnb again, or like Block with the Cash App, right? A use case that you can understand. Why are you investing in something that you don't understand? Mm -hmm. With the idea that you're going to get money. <laughs> I had. <laughs> Right, that was just funny. To I, I don't, I, I mean, it's the truth. It's the truth because I had so <laughs> She's someone. She's so hard. But I mean, that's <laughs> a real question, right? Like we ask, yeah. we ask ourselves this all the time, just about general decision making, right? Like, what yeah, are right. You don't, know but, but not even. You think you're going to be wildly going successful? To, please draw the the dots for me because I'm not seeing it. If <laughs> if you're going to let's say invest in it, right? Yeah, take it in small doses, at least, because I'm not, I mean, again, I did speculative investing in the early days, trying to understand what it was, but I also was comfortable with, if I lost it, it wouldn't break the bank for me. Right. And I think that that is something that is, it needs to be stressed over and over again. Until you understand what it is you're getting into, mm -hmm. you have to make sure that you're not just going, okay, all in. Um, there was someone that I knew um, that pulled from retirement no, and invested in a particular coin that was spoken about someone very popular mm -hmm. on a certain application. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I remember having that conversation and my heart just dropping to the pit of my stomach because this person had a mortgage, oh. had a family. And they took a nice chunk out. And now looking at what that particular thing that they invested in is worth, yeah. they lost all their money. Mm, yeah. And so again, I am, a, I am a crypto bull, which means I, am, I have a very positive outlook towards cryptocurrency. Mm. I think it is something that is here to stay. It will become a part of our future. Mm -hmm. And I have a couple of reasons, which I'll explain why uh, following no, this. Do. But you're taking down all absolutely. of our questions. <laughs> <laughs> like is he here to stay? Uh, yes. <laughs> well, yes. Okay. I believe so. And but and I, you have to make sure that you're careful. I think like yeah. this this is like a basic economics thing, yeah. right? Like mm -hmm. if you don't and financial literacy, if you don't understand 
terminology and you just throwing money at stuff, if you Absolutely. got it, fine, you know, do whatever you want. But most of us don't got it like that, where it's like, I'm going to take my retirement and right. just see, right? On a bit. It's just yeah. not wise to do um, and anything. Like, it's when you say volatile, like, if someone can tweet mm. and it change the whole market, <laughs> everything about what you know about a space, like, I'm pretty sure you want to be a little cautious right. about decision making with it. So that's that. That's, Absolutely. Yeah. And... I, I wholeheartedly think that it's here to stay, but I just, I feel like people, <laughs> people don't think before they do stuff. A... And that's another thing. Investment. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't no, mean to cut you off. In that same vein, like about it being volatile, like, is it affected by like inflation slash like mm-hmm. we haven't even done like get gotten through, you know, some sort of economic downturn in the time that, you know, this has been a real currency. Like, how will it be affected by an economic downturn if it were to happen? And yeah, these are all I, all the questions. It initially wasn't right. Like it initially was holding very strong. And then earlier this year it was just like mm, nope and yeah. so and and that's with everything right inflation went up housing went up insurance rates like i think insurance rates is really what ultimately influenced it more heavily than anything else but like seeing seeing the changes and things like that and knowing people are still like oh i'm going to get in now while it's you know where it's at and then it'll go up and everything will change. It's like, okay. You have to be very patient. You do not, wealth is not built overnight. It is built over time and it is built with consistent um, and very decisive, intentional actions. And, you know, also you have to think about where the information is coming from. For example, my financial situation and someone else's financial situation are very different. So if I say, oh yes, I just bought me X, Y, Z, right? You don't know where I'm coming from. You don't know how much I have in my bank account. You don't know what my risk tolerance is. Mm -hmm. You know, I have seen my portfolio drop by 50% Mm. and I will not flinch, right? But that is now with me being in 15 years of investing. Now, in the beginning, I saw my portfolio drop 2%. Two percent. Oh my god, the world is. Oh my god, you know I panic. Yep. But you know I've been through it up and down. Like there's no like substitute for experience. Mm-hmm. Like going through that because money is very psychological, right? People mm-hmm. see red and they're like, wait a minute. Yeah. Even if even if you're investing in something that is solid. People will see red and they will abandon Listen, ship. I'm trying to tell you, when I say I'm risk averse, like <laughs> I'm not doing any of it. So I literally let my husband, Rod, do all the things. And I'm just like, if you want to play over here with the money, you do that. I'm going to be over here <laughs> <laughs> with our savings. Right. And like we could talk about whether a little bit of that can go over there. Or we can do some extra things on the side and get some extra money and throw it at the experiment that's happening over here. Right. But I don't want any well, parts you, of the experiment. You also stress. have to think about with, with black women particularly, right? Um, the amount of debt that we graduate with, oh, right? And and then you think about women in general, we outlive our male counterparts, right? And so in, we tend to be more like, it's not necessarily conservative, but we have to be mindful. And until it makes sense, we are not jumping in that, right? Like, you, what are you trying to do? What are you telling me? Right. Nope, I'm not for it. And so, and I don't have time have... to have a second research career. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Like you have, to yeah, you have a, a whole, whole family field. and all these things. Absolutely, other competing priorities. So that is understandable why you're like, you know, I want to save. I want to make sure this is not something that's volatile. Um, 
But yeah, I again, I am bullish on it, but I encourage people to do their own research mm-hmm. and make sure that they, if they're starting out, start with a little bit, $5, no more than that, and test it out and see how you feel when your $5 goes to zero, mm. right? Like, how, how does that feel? It, or or increase it to where it doesn't, whatever that number is. Yeah, I'm just like, using yeah, that as an example. yeah. Yeah, if if you feel like if it doesn't bother you and you're like I believe in this technology, I've actually underst- I understand the use cases for it, then you can start incrementally increasing. But until then, I wouldn't recommend. Also, before you start dabbling in something like this, do you have your savings in order, mm-hmm. your emergency savings? If you are working, do you have a 401k? Like there are things that you should have in place. In my opinion, I can't speak for other people, but I I tend to be conservative and risky at the same time, which means I have all the things, everything is set up, and then I can play a little, you know? So that's how I am. I'm like, like, if things are not taken care of, we what is this conversation? We are maxing out the 401k contribution. Absolutely. You absolutely should. That's just what it is. So I mean, it's not everybody feels how I feel about saving. I know I'm a little weird, but like we've done other things. So like getting into real estate investment, right? And like looking at that as an option for saving. Like I think that's a really great option for oh, saving. Yeah. So there's there's other things that people can do that may or be less risky to them. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and yeah. and and there's risk in real estate. So there imagine is. if somebody yeah. tweeted and said, "Hey, there's this hot place in XYZ, come invest." Are you going to invest? No, you're not. Right. You're you're going to you're going to make sure. Yeah. Exactly. You're going to make sure that okay, is this a place that's actually appreciating? What is, what are the outcomes for the next 10 Let years? Are the they comps. building? Like looking. what what is happening? Yeah. Can in that is, is it crime ridden? Yeah. Will I have renters? What's you know, all of these things. Look like all of that, yeah. So you gotta. So yeah. cryptocurrency is is the same. Yeah. I don't know why all of a sudden, when it comes to this new technology, people forget the fundamentals. And I really hope that if if nothing else, that they get this from this uh, episode is focus on the fundamentals. That's a whole word mm-hmm. right there. Focus on the fundamentals. So speaking Child, of that's a class, <laughs> right? That's a class. Uh, speaking of like the fundamentals, so someone wants to get into it and there's exchanges, there's platforms, there's wallets. Like, what do you recommend for like the newbie who's like, okay, I'm comfortable losing, let's say $50 I'm, or a hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. I'm comfortable doing this. What, what should, what would you recommend that they, how they start? So there are two schools of thought. There are those that are completely like, this is supposed to be, um, completely private, right? And so you're going into spaces where you cannot trace Mm -hmm. it. There are those. I'm from the school of thought of, you know, going to a platform that has been built to allow for easier experience when I'm making the exchanges. Um, And it it takes some of the guesswork that um, is involved in, in these transactions. Um, And they have a great user experience. So it makes it easy for you to say, okay, I know what I'm depositing. I can see the money is in this particular place. I can go back and look at it. And it's, you know, I can get help if I need to have access to my account. Like Mm -hmm. there are things set in place similar to like a bank account. Mm -hmm. Right. That like um, I can leverage. So and I'm not going to speak of any particular companies um, just because. But um, there are several out there, some more more known than others. And everybody should do their research with regard to those. But I think that's a good start. Okay, I definitely agree because it's super decentralized, but having these kinds of like formal places kind of brings a small centralized aspect to this largely decentralized yes. entity. Okay. Now I I want to give an example, another one of like the internet in its early mm-hmm. days, right? When it was just everything goes. And then all of a sudden it started to converge in a way that it, it did become a lot more centralized. Um, and even the platforms that we use, like a Google, you know, where you go, it is a centralized space. But 
even it, with it being centralized, it gives you access to the things that you need. And so as this technology continues to proliferate, I do think that for mass adoption, people are going to want to have rules in place Absolutely. because yeah. it, it's just, it makes it easier yeah. to, to transact and be in these spaces. And there are always going to be those niche groups that are more so the decentralized, you know, I'm off the grid and that's okay. Mm -hmm. And that's great as well. Um, but for mass adoption, I think that that is the natural evolution of things. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's interesting to look at like people's wallets and to see like what they're investing in and how much money they have. And like, you don't really necessarily know whose wallet is whose mm -hmm. unless they, you know, there's someone, you know, and it's just like, Oh, so this person is investing in this, 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 and this, and they've got blah amount, which converts to this amount of dollars. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and so you'll see like crypto millionaires. Yep. Looking, talking about different coins and stuff like that and what yeah. they're doing, what they're investing in. And then you'll see like regular people. Yeah. It's like they got $5 for real. $5. <laughs> we have a, a friend who bought Bitcoin at $150 when it was $150. Bought mm. a few. And said person mm. was like, you need to get in on this. And like said person is name is known for lots of different random hustles. So I was like, here you go with something else. Let me. <laughs> so I was like, I'm good. You can throw your money into internet dollars if you want to. <laughs> Because, like, this is, like, maybe 2014, 2013, like, when it was first, mm -hmm. like, becoming a thing. And I was like, I don't understand this. And, I, and the person who brought it to me was not the most reputable source. But, uh, yeah, they semi-retired <laughs> off of what they mm. what they had and, have, you know, set themselves up for the life they want to live. So. <laughs> yeah, well, listen. I, that's amazing. Yeah, that's, that's I mean... Think about, okay, when was the last time you printed out a photo? That's a good question. <laughs> um, a really good I question. personally printed it out or Walgreens printed right. it out? <laughs> well, <laughs> Walgreens. Because <laughs> I've done, I did it like probably last year. I made some prints. I don't know. I printed our for, wedding photos for some reason I mean, there's or a another. toddler on the other side of the wall. So, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I'm saying like was it was for a specific purpose, mm -hmm. but on a regular basis, that's not something no, that you do. No, I even have a photo printer, you know, and photo paper. And you're not using not it. Not doing it. <laughs> yeah, it's not happening over here. Hilarious. Or when was the last time you went into a bank? Uh, well, that's much sooner. Yeah. Much sooner. I for a specific that. thing? Well, oh, well, okay. See, that's a different thing. But like on a regular basis. Right. I oh, do I don't like going stuff. to talk to them people. Yeah. Yeah. So if you think about like, these are just everyday things, right? Like your money now lives in the cloud. Oh yeah. Y your, your pictures now live in the cloud. I just came and back so, from Sweden not too long ago and okay. they don't have money. Like you are not seeing a bill, a coin. Mm. You don't have a credit card. You aren't going to eat. Wow. That's just how it works over there. Eat. So we're definitely... I mean, that, that's that's perfect. That's a perfect use case. Yeah. Because in the beginning, when you think about um, trade, it used to be, I'll give you this thing and I get something in return, right? And then it moved to, I will give you this gold or precious metal and then I get this thing in return. Right. Then it moved to a centralized bank being created and it's being a promise. So I give you this note, whatever denomination it is, mm -hmm. for the promise that it is worth this particular thing and I get something in return. Based on what and I got in the vault. Exactly. Then it moved to now we're transacting online. Like when you go buy your things on Amazon, you're not giving them cash. It's all digital. It's all in the back end. You don't see it. Mm -hmm. So if these transformations are happening, first it starts slow yeah. and then it goes at the speed of light. It's not hard to think about, you know, 
cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology becoming a staple within no, our society. It's really not. What do you think is yeah. like going to, what is it going to look like, like in the future when, cause you're of the belief that, you know, crypto is here to stay and people just need this, Absolutely. Have, like, this adoption sort of snowball effect where, you know, maybe it'll start slowly and gradually start going. But like, what do you think like the use cases, like when we, let's say 15 years from now, like what would that look like? I think the, my personal opinion is that it's going to really hit for non-fungible tokens, NFTs. I was just going to um, ask you about that. I've been waiting <laughs> to get out to these like NFTs. Right there. <laughs> Somebody needs the, to bring up NFTs. So this is my personal belief, um, just because it is the arts lend themselves to being disrupted, mm -hmm. right? Um, artists tend to be really innovative. They tend to be interesting types of people. They tend to be really open to new types of technology and mm -hmm. early adopters. And so you think about when you're buying art, you have an original piece created by the creator, and then you'll have reprints mm -hmm. of that piece. Now, instead of you having a physical reprint, it is now a digital reprint. And so you also had examples of like um, concerts being done in the metaverse, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Um, I believe Travis Scott had um, a concert that sold out, by the way. People were not there and they were in the concert and they had a great time and it was very successful. And then they got some sort of tokenized item to state that they were a part of this particular experience. Um, the reason why I think it is going to be something that is really powerful is a conversation I had with my soon to be eight year old, right? He says to me, mommy, for my birthday, I want you to take me to Africa. Ooh. And I said to him, um, you have no money. Uh, these are very expensive uh, gifts, you know, because he had, he had run through a slew of them. I want a Lamborghini. Oh, he's eight. Um, I, I want you. Yeah, I want you to buy me a yacht. I'm like, why didn't you go ask your father? And then he was like, OK, if you can't buy me a yacht, you can't buy me a Lamborghini. Take me to Africa. And I, and I said to him, I cannot take you to Africa because you have no money. <laughs> but Africa has uh, multiple countries. It's a continent. So you have to figure out where you want to go. Uh, but he says to me, well, mommy, if you can't take me to Africa, can you buy me a digital world? And I, a light bulb went off. So you think about he is Gen Alpha. My oldest is Gen Z. And they are digital natives. And he truly is a digital native. He had never seen a commercial till he was six. Wow. He didn't know what a commercial was. Right. And so like they, the way they think, the way they operate, they are very comfortable with moving in and out of the physical to digital world. And so what does it look like for them? I have no idea, but it mm -hmm. is going to be something that I think is a mashup between art and and like, I guess the environment of some sort, like a, a virtual environment of some sort. And then of course the currency to pay while you're in these spaces. Um, you know, think about Roblox, these companies that like, if you play, my husband plays, um, you know, his games and they look so realistic. So it's not far fetched for me to think that cryptocurrency won't start creeping Cryptocurrency and also blockchain won't start creeping into these spaces. Um, and gaming is becoming incredibly popular. So I guess to bring it back to your to your question, it's where do matrix. I see it? Yeah, I think <laughs> the Matrix. Ready Player really. One. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> Ready Player One. Yes, yes I do. I, I hope it's not that dystopian, <laughs> but I do see. Not the, just the I universe do see part, gaming. Not the, yeah, 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 yeah. Not the whole situation because that mm -hmm. was a bit crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, gaming. I see it becoming there a big part of the arts community um, in those spaces. Yeah. yeah. 
I definitely, I can, I can definitely see it the same way like credit cards. Eventually people had to adopt that and say, I don't have physical money. What is this, you know, yeah. transaction thing? And we went from having to like get physical copies of the cards with the uh, carbon paper to it existing digitally. So I feel like, you know, people just need to get comfortable with its transactions mm -hmm. and it'll start to take over that way. So in the same vein with with every technology, there's a, there's a book called The Gift of Fire, and I love it because it talks about mm -hmm. technology being like the gift of fire to humans where like, hey, it helped us to cook and inspire so many innovations, but also it burns things down. So there's always a positive and a negative. Yeah. Like how do you, yeah. so there's lots of regulations that are being posited to figure mm -hmm. out how to make sure that, you know, nefarious things don't happen. So how do you see like regulations around Bitcoin like affecting this, or just how do you, view the regulations in general because how do you regulate something that's decentralized you know it's mm -hmm. yeah what are your opinions there can't <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah it's 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 going to be difficult but i think there are platforms that are more centralized mm -hmm. and in order for mass adoption to happen some sort of regulation is going to have to be enacted they're going to have to follow some certain rules in order to operate in these spaces because people are not comfortable in mass with no. just completely decentralization. People w say they want it, but mm -hmm. in actuality, um, if we wanted it, then the products and services that we use wouldn't all be similar or the same. Hmm. Well, people don't like you can go because yeah, people it disrupts who has wealth like no people definitely don't want it because of that but also at the same time me um from the personal standpoint could you imagine if you had to create your own form of google to get the information that you needed as opposed to going to google and getting the information okay. that's that's how i i i, I like make the the case for centralization to an extent, mm -hmm. right? I, um, if you talk to a purist, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Um, but again, for the masses, I don't see that being possible. Right. That is why comp a company like a Coinbase can exist, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And, and I mean, let's be quite frank because if, if people wanted decentralization as they say they do, then Coinbase in essence wouldn't exist. It wouldn't be a thing. Yeah. yeah, no, you're absolutely right. I didn't even think about the whole like not everybody's going to set up a server and mine and do all the the grunt work to get these coins. Ab exactly. Like, hey, this already we are exists. creatures of habit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, creatures of habit and creatures of ease. Most of us, and unless you're a purist, you want to be able to do something in the quickest easiest way. And so therefore, if you're going to add friction, most of us are not going to be doing it, especially if you have other things going on in your life. Right. There are, there are um, people who still don't use smartphones and it's like, and my oh, dad why? is one of them. And they have the choice. They have the choice. Right. And they're the purists. Yes. Right. So <laughs> there will always be a faction of them. And I think it's a, it's a beautiful thing because it keeps the integrity alive. Um, at the same time, I understand that that's not a possibility for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that's really powerful about this decentralized nature is for people that are in places that um, have a lot of corruption, mm. that have a lot of instability. Like we hear um, in the more established countries, we have a um, we have infrastructure that is pretty set. Yeah, we may have things that we don't like about the places that we live, but in all in all, the, the countries and the way it operates, it goes business as usual, right? And so imagine if you're in a space, in a place that does not have that. And, you know, I spoke to my aunt um, a while back and she is, she is in another country um, and she said that she went to the bank and the bank said she could not access her oh, money. No. Right. But you could, could you imagine something like that happening here? No, you couldn't. It would be, it wouldn't Mass be. Hysteria. And so, <laughs> absolutely. And so, you know, you think about places where they do not have this type of infrastructure. This is why, in part, also, um, crypto 
is also very popular. So I also wanted to bring that up as well. Speaking of other countries, are you uh, up to date with like El Salvador and how they've gone like completely crypto? What are your opinions there? I am watching them like a hawk because I think it's fascinating. Um, I want to see how this is going to turn out. It's like a Harvard uh, business case. Yes. It's a you huge know, experiment. like it really is. Yes. It's a huge experiment. And, and we will tell if he was a visionary or a madman. And I think maybe it's a combination, a a combination of both. You know, I I think there, there tends to be a little bit of, of madness that you have to have in order to create some of the technologies that are created. I mean, again, think of Apple, who would have thought that you're going to have this, you know, like we were going to be, you know, talking over, waves that we don't see right and right? Be produced and so. produced in another spot and you don't even yeah, yeah. and you don't even like we would have been right? called witches in salem <laughs> absolutely absolutely and and you know there are also times when um technology oh. is uh created very early and it's not ready yeah. and so it will be interesting to see if maybe he was early or maybe he was right on time or maybe he was completely out of line. Well, I so. know, like, you know, some companies, like, we have a friend who's a realtor and has a PhD in engineering. Shout out to Shima. Hey, Shima. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, her real estate company had her attend a, a training on crypto because they fully expect that very soon people will be purchasing homes using cryptocurrency. Wow. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you need to like, it's like artificial intelligence, right? It's like this huge buzzword right now. Every industry is trying to figure out how to leverage that technology for their use. I see the blockchain cryptocurrency in the same light. It's a disruptive technology. And if you're not aware of it and like its capabilities, you're either going to get blindsided by (laughs) Right. By the changes that are about to come or you'll be ready. It's kind of like, and I always go back to my analogies because that's the way I think, but um, Blockbuster. Yep. Growing up, Blockbuster was everywhere. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. I can and smell like, Blockbuster. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> it, it was a thing. It was a thing. And on the weekends, it was like, oh, I'm going to mm-hmm. Blockbuster. Uh-huh. I'm going to get these movies. And then Netflix came about. Mm-hmm. And you know, management was offered yep. yes, they were. an opportunity they were. to buy Blockbuster. And I mean, not, pardon the me, not bag. Blockbuster, Netflix. Yep. Fumbled the bag, completely ignored it. And they were like, what is a Netflix? And now Netflix is, is, is a verb. Right. It's in our ne- lexicon. <laughs> I, I Netflix this weekend, right. Netflix and chill. Like they have merch. Like it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. And so it went from being something, a niche, to becoming a thing around the globe. Yeah. And so that is how technology spreads. Yep. It's 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 very small in the beginning and then it just explodes. So another question about this explosion cuz there's always nefarious mm-hmm. actors. How hard Absolutely. is it to forge some piece of uh blockchain technology, for example, like a coin or like how difficult is I know it's like mind and there's all these algorithms and equations and things like could someone be also working just as hard to make a fake one? Like how do you well yeah, what do you yes. think mm-hmm. there? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Because criminals work harder. Yes, and <laughs> yes. Instead of putting their power um, to good. <laughs> absolutely. Um it is, but it's it's much harder to do this because of the fact that it is decentralized and there are so many people within the system and you have to verify. So going back to the part where I talked about the, the three parts of the blockchain, where it is the information that is stored in there plus the two hashes, the hash from the previous block and then the hash that is that has been created by this particular block. You have to do that across millions. And, and so therefore it is easy, not easy, but it's a lot easier to verify if something is off Mm -hmm. because if you're, if you're trying to, um, corrupt the system, you have to do that to a 
bunch of computers, like half, mm. as opposed to just one. Whereas like if you were to hack into my bank account, it's easy to hack into my bank account. But if you're trying to hack into, let's say, a bank, it's much harder to act, like hack into the bank because of all the systems that they have in place. So that is just a similar a analogy. Hmm. I, I forgot the whole distributed ledger thing helps, you know, to Absolutely. everybody has a record. So unless you're going to get on everybody's computer and change everyone's record yes. in the exact same way, then... And, and it's also viewable by anybody anywhere. Mm. And so it's it's a timestamp. It's, you know, it's it's capturing the different um, numbers and the codes that are associated with that particular block. And so that's why it's very hard to do that. Um, but there will always be people, again, that try. And there are people that come up with fake um, um, tokens. Yeah. And yeah, they come up with fake tokens um, and they create... Um, companies, they stand up full companies and they will email you. In fact, I was conducting some research not too long ago and um, a participant said to me, yeah, they, they emailed me and it looked like the website and they asked me to pay before I could access. And I was like, do not um, that doesn't, no, yeah, I can't, right. I can't tell you, like, but I would it, suggest but... that you do not. And so there's always going to be, um, and, and part of the reason why people were very scared of the blockchain was of course, cause they, the, the dark web, yes. right? All of the, people you heard about all of the crazy, it, they can't be trained. yes. Uh, Yes, yes, yes. But when you think about like centralized exchanges, it becomes much harder to do that because again, you have everybody's a part of it and you can see these transactions. They're more transparent. And so it reduces the ability for you to kind of go under the radar. And that's why even if they get the Bitcoin or whatever uh, currency they get, they'll try to quickly flip Mm. it to something else that is less transparent. Interesting. Hmm. So yeah. I feel like we'll have a lot of people who this podcast like sparks their interest in investing, especially like, you know, they feel like, you know, they get whatever their comfortable amount is, you know, to put in. Um, what are some red flags that people should look out for when they're getting into this space? Like we know that there's people, for example, I've, I'm not even going to say it. I won't say that company. Anyway, there, <laughs> there are people out here who don't mean any good. There's lots of pyramid schemes, Forex, where people are like... <laughs> <laughs> I said the company, sorry. But uh, like, what are some things that people should be aware of? Or like, like you just mentioned one um, just now, like, hey, if they ask you to pay to access the site, no, no, no. Like, what are some, are you aware of any other like red flags or no-nos or things that people try to do to con folks out of their money? Um, Do not share your private keys mm. ever, ever. You share your private key, that's like your social mm. That's an equivalent, right? You're not giving your social out to people because what if they have that, they can do a lot of different things with that. And your private key is something that protects your your crypto. Um, you have a public and a private. So like a public would be like your email. Mm. You can share that, right? But your private is like your social. So do not share that. Um Go up and like look up the reputable exchanges. There are several that are actually reputable that people use. Um, and I'm not going to say all of them, but you can Google them. And then before you jump in, like do your research, talk to people that you know, you know, that you trust. Cause I, that is also community is very big when it comes to cryptocurrency. Um, do not just dis- downplay that. And then obviously start with a little, a little bit and make sure that it's on the up and up before you start putting more money into that. So that's why I always say $5, you know, that's the cost of a Starbucks coffee, right? $5, and I know not everybody is in a in the same financial situation, but hopefully that is something that you will feel comfortable that if it were to go, that you wouldn't be, you know, at your last. So that's my advice. I, love I think it. that's a great place to end. I agree. This episode. This Dr. Is so Pamela good. Gibbs. <laughs>
<laughs> Ma'am. That sounds so weird when y'all say that. You work so hard Thank for this you. title. You're going to accept this title, Dr. Pamela. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, my right. God. <laughs> That's right. Thank you for for thinking of us, for sharing your, your new role and, you know, as much as you could anyways. Yes. With our... Our people, our listeners, hopefully, I mean, I learned some stuff today and I hope that they did too. I hope so too, because this is a topic that people are really like, I want to do it, but I don't know about it. And you laid it out plain and clear. So how did- Well, I I appreciate, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, uh, No, go ahead. I was just going to say, I really appreciate you ladies taking the time um, to speak with me today and like ask these very thought provoking questions. And hopefully I was able to explain it in a way that is digestible. Part of the thing with um, blockchain, crypto, all of that is that it's very technical in its jargon Mm -hmm. and it, it just, it seems overwhelming. And so my goal is always to kind of like make it seem more understandable because um, it is going to be a part of the future and it is going to play a big role in the way this world operates. So I definitely need more of us in this space. So thank you again. I want to have you share with them how they can find you on the internet so that they can, you know, See what you're up to. You don't got to tell them what your wallet name is, though. It's okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's really simple. I'm Pamela Disrupts. Um, that's on Twitter and that's on Instagram and then Pamela Gibbs on LinkedIn. I am really a lurker for the most part, um, but my like game is serious. So. <laughs> I remember you being like, I don't really post. And you were like, make it crafting this post for like two hours when, when you left Two us, hours. Like, it, it's ridiculous. It. And I'm just like, da 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 post. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm a lurker. I, I like like just ingesting it and giving like props to people, giving likes and stuff like that. So that's okay. There's a role for everybody. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much again. Yes, thank you. We'll stay in touch. Okay. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>